Okay, so we're going to follow with the notes. Uh, if you listen to me, I will be reading the dialogue. And if you look at the notes paper, the note-taking guide that I gave you today in class, you'll be able to follow along, and I will guide you through there. All right. So imagine if Sean could catch lightning in a bottle. He could use it to power his toys in a zap. In fact, one lightning bolt can power 10 million homes for an entire month. Wouldn't it be great if you could catch a lightning bolt? Since we can't, we have to find other ways to generate electricity, which we're going to talk about today. But most of it, uh, electricity we use today, comes from energy-rich substances formed from remains of ancient living organisms. But we need to look at how these ancient organisms turned into energy resources, and that's what we're going to be exploring more today. So about 350 million years ago, the earth was covered with swampy forests. Like the plants that live today, these plants stored the sun's energy to make food in a process called photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, light energy from the sun gets converted into chemical energy. When the plants died, uh, the remains collected in the swamps, and over time these swamps were covered with soil and tiny pieces of rock called sediments, trapping the energy stored in the dead plant material. And since yeah, I've kind of already answered the question, do you know what these tiny pieces of rock are called? And they're called sediments. <coughs> when the surface of a rock it gets exposed to wind, water, or ice for a very long time, the rock's going to crack and break into pieces. And the sediment is then carried until it's deposited at the bottom of lakes, uh, in swamps, or, as we talked about previously, on the ocean floor. On over millions of years, the heat and the pressure from the overlying layers of sediment transform the plant remains into coal. If this was a story on land, something a little bit more interesting was happening on the floor of the ocean. Tiny marine organisms like algae and plankton uh, were also buried under layers of sediment. And then over millions of years, the pressure exerted by these layers transformed or changed the buried organisms into not coal, but oil and natural gas. Coal, oil, and natural gas are the energy-rich substances formed from the remains of ancient living organisms. They are known as fossil fuels. Just like we need energy to play and study, our homes also need energy to run smoothly. We can use energy stored in these fossil fuels to generate electricity. Do you know which of these fossil fuels lights up most of the United States? Is it coal, oil, or natural gas? If you said coal, you are correct. Burning coal runs electric generators that produce electricity. The electricity is then transported to light up your home and power various electronical appliances that we all need in our daily life. Uh, just like this shiny car, right? If we didn't have coal and oil, it would be basically useless. But how does the car move? Cars and other vehicles are powered by gasoline, which is extracted from oil. Natural gas is commonly used in homes for cooking and for heating. Both Jamie and natural gas deserve a pat on their backs for this delicious spread. Fossil fuels seem to do so much good. But can you think of any negative qualities they may have? Oftentimes, fossil fuels will produce harmful gases which can pollute the atmosphere. And another big one, they're non-renewable resources. What do you think non-renewable means? We went over that vocabulary word today. Non-renewable resources are resources that cannot be replaced within a short period of time, meaning it's going to take thousands and th millions of years to form and can be completely used up in just a couple of hundreds of years. Once we use these up, 
they have to wait a few million years to refuel. We can't just get them back. So if that's the case, how can we prevent fossil fuel from being used up so quickly? We can do this by using a renewable source of energy like the sun. For instance, the solar panel on top of Sean's house uses the sun's energy to light up his home even when there is a power failure. The sun never runs out of energy, never takes a holiday. That's why its energy is limitless, cost-free, and additionally, it does not cause any pollution. How come we don't use solar energy for everything, though, you may be asking? Well, different weather conditions and varying amounts of sunlight can make solar energy undependable. For instance, like on a cold winter day, Sean cannot rely on the sun's energy to keep his room lit up if there's a power failure. A close friend of the sun, though, is wind. And just how a breath of air can rotate a pinwheel, wind can rotate the blades of a giant wheel or turbine. And you may have seen these. They have a lot of them out in West Texas. Wind turbines can transform wind energy into electrical energy. What could be the advantages and disadvantages of using wind energy to elect generate electricity though. Wind energy does not cause pollution but it does require wide open spaces where wind speeds are high enough to generate large amounts of electricity. And as you see right here they're also responsible for a loss of habitat, it takes a lot of land, uh, of migratory birds killing around 40,000 of them each year in the US alone. Flowing water can also be used to generate electricity. First, a dam is built across a river. This stores the water, forming a big lake behind the dam called the reservoir. When the gates of the dam are open, the stored water flows, turning the blades of turbines to generate electricity, just like you see in the diagram. Electricity that is produced by flowing water is called hydroelectricity. These power plants don't cause pollution, but can seriously disrupt the environment by causing floods near the dam site. Have you ever wondered where the boiling hot lava in this eruption comes from? It comes from deep inside the Earth's crust. The heat energy produced inside the Earth is also called geothermal energy. But how do we convert this heat to usable energy? We can recover this heat as steam or hot water by digging deep wells and pumping it to the surface. This can be used to heat buildings and generate electricity. Biofuels are made of biomass. Biomass is plant and animal material such as wood, waste, and leftover parts of crops. But they don't produce much energy, so large amounts need to be burned. And think about this, how are fossil fuels that we discussed earlier in the video and biofuels similar? Both of them are made of plant and animal waste. If heat and pressure turn ancient remains into fossil fuels, they can also turn sediment layers into, voila, sedimentary rocks. When sediment layers pile up, the sediments at the bottom are pressed down by the weight of the layers being added on top. The minerals that were dissolved in the water fill the spaces between the sediments, cementing them together to form sedimentary rock layers. Different types of sedimentary rocks include limestone, sandstone, shale, and conglomerates. If all sedimentary rocks are made by sediments, what makes them different? Excuse the bell. They're different because the sediments that form them are different. For instance, limestone forms mostly from the shells of ancient sea creatures that have been broken, crushed, and cemented together. Many buildings in Austin, including the Travis County Courthouse and the University of Texas, are constructed from local limestone. This is because millions of years ago, this area was at the bottom of a shallow sea. 
Today we learned that sediments are tiny pieces of rock carried by wind, water, and ice. They get deposited in places like the floor of lakes, swamps, and oceans. The pressure of overlying sediments cause lower sediment layers to cement together, forming the sedimentary rocks. Coal, oil, natural gas, or fossil fuel. Coal was made of the remains of plant deposits. Oil and natural gas come from the remains of tiny organisms in the ocean called algae and plankton. Our energy needs are currently met mainly by burning non-renewable fuel fuels. Alternative energy comes from resources that don't pollute as much as fossil fuels. These include solar, wind, hydroelectric, geothermal, and biofuels. While Sean goes to look for more batteries, it's time to turn off our batteries and say goodbye. So hopefully you were able to get the notes. You can go back and look at them, fill them in if you need to. Make sure you use your word bank. I'll be checking these tomorrow. There is a portion on the back called look at the alternatives. The last thing, and it has five spaces, numbered one through five. You don't have to do that one. We'll be taking care of that one later on in the week.